Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, we will talk today about algebra of segments. Basically, it's something which is in between algebra and geometry, or rather, it accumulates in itself algebraic and geometrical properties of segments. Well, let's think about segments. The only important characteristic of a segment is basically its length. Well, there is no much shape in it, basically. So all the different segments have the same shape in general, just different lengths. So length is a numerical value, and that's why working with segments can be in some way replaced or supplemented um, by working with their lengths using purely algebraical uh, approach. And um, we have already uh, spoken about certain algebraic, if you wish, manipulations with segments. Like, for instance, we can add two segments, getting another segment of the lengths, which is equal to sum of the two lengths. Um, at the same time, so we can add two segments, we can subtract from a smaller, uh, from a bigger segment, we can subtract the smaller one. So, um, in this case, we just put them together. In this case, we have to go backwards by the length of the second segment, and whatever is left would be the difference. Um, we also can multiply segments by any natural number, like my, by 10, for instance because multiplication by a natural number is basically addition with itself a certain number of times. We also can divide the segment into equal parts, um, and the number of these parts can be basically any. For instance, how to divide a segment into three different parts? Well, you have this angle. You have another segment of any lengths three times uh, put on this side of the angle, then connect the ends and put the parallel lines, and these will be also equal to each other parts of a given segment. We have already learned that um, during our um, previous lecture. So, if we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply by natural number, we can divide by natural number, uh, which means we can multiply by any rational number where m and n are any natural numbers uh, by basically first multiplying and then dividing by n. So we have certain uh, operations already covered. Uh, I will go into a little bit more complex operations. I have put them in a row, which we will go through during this lecture. Um, and basically, during the explanation of how these manipulations are done, um, well, you will, be, you will be introduced to these algebraical concepts of manipulation with segments. Okay, number one, how to multiply a segment by square root of two. Well, this is an easy part, and all you need to do is remember the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, if you have two, Cajative with a and b, then c is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared. So you remember this. Now, what if a and b are equal in length and they are equal to that particular segment a which we would like to multiply by square root of 2? So I replace b with a. Now we have a squared plus a squared which is equal to uh, square root of 2a squared, which is equal to a square root of 2. So, to multiply a segment by a square root of 2, we have to build this triangle. It's a right triangle with both scattered equal to our uh, segment in length. So, you have the right angle, you have your um, segment on one side of the angle and then another, and then the diagonal which 
hypot which, which is actually a hypotenuse of this particular triangle, is exactly the segment we are looking for. Its length is equal to the length of the hydrogen, which is A, times square root of 2. Easy. Now, how to divide by square root of 2? Well, obviously we have to use something similar, but in this case it's the hypotenuse which is equal to A. And we have to build the right triangle with both cachete equal to itself, equal among themselves, and hypotenuse being a given uh, segment. Well, how to do it? Very easily. You have to remember that locus of all the points from which given segment is viewed at 90 degree, this is 90 degree. So locus of all the points from which this angle is uh, 90 degree is a circle with A as a diameter. If you remember, inscribed angle is measured by half um, of the arc supported it, and the arc supported is basically half a circle because this is the diameter. We, that's how we built our circle, um, which is 180 degree. So half of this is 90. So any angle with vertex ver, with, with vertex on this particular circle is 90 degrees. Even if it doesn't look like on my drawing, although it actually a little bit almost like. So we start from having our segment as a diameter of a circle. Now, out of all these right triangles, we have to choose the one which has equal casualty. How to do it? Well, draw another diameter perpendicular to this one. And wherever it crosses the uh, the circle is uh, the vertex we are looking for, because obviously since these two diameters are perpendicular to other to each other, then this angle will not only be 90 degree, but also these two chords will be equal to among themselves. So this is a right triangle with equal casualty and. Uh, hypotenuse equal to A. Now, if this is X and this is X, obviously, again, X squared plus X squared is equal to A squared, 2X squared equals to A squared, and X is equal to A divided by square root of 2. And that's what's needed for the second problem. All right, next. How to multiply uh, by square root of any number, any natural number n? Square root of 3, square root of 4, square root of 27, etc. Well, let me just uh, uh, give you the following process, if you wish. We start first with a and a, and this is a square root of 2, as we have already proven before, right? Now, let's wipe out these guys. Let's add A and calculate this. This is the hypotenuse. This is the right triangle. One side is A square root of 2, which we know how to do. And this is still a. So this x would be a squared plus a squared plus a square root of 2 uh, squared, which is equal to a squared plus 2a squares, which is equal to 3a squares, from which x is equal to a uh, square root of 3. OK, so we got a square root of 3. Next. Well, I'm sure you have already guessed. 
If this is again A, then this would be X. But in this case, X squared is equal to A squared plus A square root of 3 squared, right? Which is A square plus 3A square, which is 4A square, from which X is equal to A square root of 4. So this is A square root of 4. Yes, square root of 4 is 2, I know that, but let's not just go into this. Next, again, as you probably have already figured out, again, right angle and A again. So what would be the lengths of this guy? All I have to do is change 3 to 4. So this is a square root of 5. Now, as you see, we can continue this process indefinitely, and eventually we will get a very nice shape, actually. Right angle, a square root of 6. Right angle, a square root of 7, etc., etc. So it's just unwinding, actually, bigger and bigger radius, and we can continue this process indefinitely. Our radius, well, it's not really a radius because it's not a, 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 a circle, but it, it looks like a circle, but its radius is actually increasing. So it, it, there is a special name for this, for this particular figure, and uh, it, it's part of the higher level mathematics, but it doesn't really matter. What does matter is we have the process um, which you can actually compare with the induction. First, we have, com uh, uh, we have learned how to calculate um, a times square root of 2. So this is like n equals to 2, the beginning of the induction process. And then, if you already know how to build a square root of k, then it's very easy to build a square root of k plus 1 by having this is a square root of k, this is a, then this would be a square root of k plus 1. So this is the process, the inductive process. So you know how to begin this process, and you know how to make one step from k to k plus 1, which means you can make a step from 2 to 3, from 3 to 4, and that's how you can build any square root of n. That's this third problem. problem. So the, the algebra which I'm using right now is not much of an algebra, it's basically a Pythagorean theorem so far, but you will get a little bit more complicated algebra. Now how about this one, the number four? So um, there are many different means. There is an arithmetic mean of two numbers, which is this. There is a quadratic mean, which is this. square root of uh, quadratic average. There is a geometric mean, which is square root of their multiplication. So these are a little bit more complex formulas. So if A and B represent uh, lengths of two given segments, question is how to build average segment between these two how to build the segment which has certain mean, and there are many different means. All these means are in between A and B, it's just different to calculate it. Let's just consider if A is equal to 2 and B is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's say 8. <clears throat> what will it be? A plus B divided by 2, so this is the arithmetic average. <clears throat> arithmetic average would be equal to 2 plus 8, 10 divided by 2, 5. Now, this uh, quadratic average, <coughs> excuse my voice, uh, 2 square 4, uh, 64, 68, 39, square root of 39, 
well, uh, it's six something. So quadratic average would be six point something. And finally, uh, the geometric average between two and eight would be multiplication is 16, square root is four, so geometric average would be four. So these are numbers in between two and eight, but they are different. So we can calculate differently the mean between two numbers. There are many different means. Um, uh, arithmetic average is more often um, uh, occurred in, in the real life. This type of average is more applicable to some statistical calculations. Uh, this is rarely used. But in any case, it does exist. It's called geometric, quadratic, and arithmetic average. All right, so let's build all these three um, averages using A and B as the lengths of two given uh, segments. Well, the first one, A plus B divided by two, is simple. Because if you have one, and then you have another, segment, you put them together, that's A plus B. How to divide this in half? You just draw a perpendicular bisector. So that's easy. Now, how about this one? A squared plus B squared divided by 2. Well, let's consider this as square root of a squared plus b squared divided by square root of 2. Now, we do know how to build this particular um, segment, the segment which has the lengths um, equal to uh, square root of sum of squares of given two segments. Well, very easy. It's basically, again, the Pythagorean theorem. You have one catheter a, another catheter b, then the diagonal would be square root of a square plus b square, right? That's the theorem. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Now, after you have built this particular segment, next step is divided by square root of 2. And we already know how to do it. We did it, did it as number 2. So that's the solution. That's how to build quadratic average. Now, how to build geometric average? That's an interesting point. I would like to remind you an, an, an interesting theorem uh, in geometry of right triangles, which we actually did cover before, when we were talking about similarity. So if this is ABC, and this is uh, an altitude, CH, now, obviously, triangles ACH, which has this uh, acute angle, is similar to triangle ABC, which also has the same acute angle, because another angle is 90 degree. Same thing about BCH. It's also similar to the big triangle, because they have common acute angle. And another one is... 90 degrees. So, uh, all these triangles, all these three triangles, I would say, two small inside triangles and the big one are all similar to each other. Angles are equal, these angles are equal, this is 90 degree, and this is 90 degree. Now, from similarity, we can have the correspondence of the sides, right? So, let's consider uh, this piece to be A, this piece to be B, and the altitude H. Now, since these guys are similar to each other, then um, the ratio of the corresponding sides should be the same. Now, in this small triangle, ACH. A lies against double arced angle. And in this triangle, BCH, against the same angle, you have the H. So A over H is equal to 
Now let's talk about different angle. Against this single arc angle, in this triangle ACH lies H. And in this triangle BCH, against the same angle, you have B. So that's the proportionality. A relates to H as H relates to B, from which we can do AB is equal to H square and H is equal to AB square root. So that's the answer uh, to this particular uh, problem. Question is, given A and B, how to build H? Well, elementary. We will do exactly the same thing as before by having uh, A plus B as a diameter of a circle, which is a locus of all the points, like C, where um, the, uh, this particular segment AB can be viewed at 90 degrees. So all the angles are 90 degree from any point on this circle. Now, we have to find a point on the circle which has the altitude equal to h. Well, very simply, let's just have this altitude from this point of the height h. Of, of any height. I mean, let's just draw a perpendicular. We don't know the h. And whatever the point uh, of intersection is, would be the, uh, this segment would be the one which we are looking for, because number one, this angle is uh, 90 degrees, because it's on the cir circle. Um, and these two uh, segments are equal to whatever we wanted, A and B, our, our given segments. So this particular segment would be equal to, in lengths, to square root of multiplied lengths of e e each of those. So again, we put them together, A plus B basically, have a circle uh, on this as a diameter, and uh, from this point we draw a perpendicular, and whatever the lengths from this point to the circle, is actually the answer to this. Well, obviously it crosses on both sides, but these two are equal in lengths. Because the perpendicular to a diameter is always, chord is always divided in, in, in half. All right, so that's how you build a geometric average. That's the next one. And the last but not least, and probably more interesting is related to so-called golden ratio. Now, what is golden ratio? Golden ratio in geometry is the following thing. If you have a particular uh, segment, then um, let's say this is x and this is a minus x. So the golden ratio is uh, it, it, it is basically the point which divides our given segment of the length A in two halves where the left, uh, the smaller, let's put the smaller part relates to the bigger part as bigger part relates to the whole uh, uh, segment. So A minus X divided by X is equal to X divided by A. So that's basically the equation for X which we have to solve somehow, but solve it geometrically. Now, um, just as a side, uh, uh, side note, this golden ratio is very much popular um, in, in, in the nature. Lots of different things, trees, uh, human body, etc., they contain uh, certain division points which are golden ratio. Like, for instance, elbow is, uh, divided, is dividing the, the arm in, in golden ratio, I mean, on this level. Um, something with leaves, something with many different aspects. Golden ratio is really very much natural thing, so to speak. So, 
how to divide a segment in golden ratio. So this part is A minus X and this is X. The whole segment is A. So the smaller part relates to the bigger part as bigger relates to the whole, um, uh, whole segment. Well, let's use algebra. Now, um, how can we use algebra? Well, this is basically a quadratic equation. Um, let's do it this way. From this, we go to a minus x times a is equal to x times x, which is x squared. So this is an equation from which we can derive the value of x. Well, let's uh, uh, simplify it. x squared minus ax goes to this ax, a squared minus a squared is equal to 0, right? All right, fine. This is algebra so far. Now, what are the roots of this uh, e equation? x first is equal to minus a plus square root of a squared by 4 plus a squared. And the second value is minus a2 minus a squared by 4 plus a squared. So two solutions. Uh, obviously, it's regular solution to a quadratic equation. Now, this one is definitely um, not good for us because this is negative. So negative cannot be the length of the segment. So let's forget about this one. And this is a solution. All right, now the question is how we can construct um, a segment A, a segment X, which has this particular length? Well, easy. First of all, let's construct A divided by 2. So if this is A, this is A divided by 2. We know how to do this. Now, what is this? This is a Pythagorean theorem uh, of a hypotenuse of a triangle where this is A divided by 2 and this is A, right? Because A divided by 2 squared is A squared by 4, and A is A squared, so this is our square root of a squared divided by 4 plus a squared. So we got this point. Now all we have to do is subtract from this, this. Just put the compass here, subtract this, and whatever is remaining would be the solution of our equation. So we have geometrically solved the quadratic equation, and uh, well, um, basically, we have found this particular piece which should be used here. This one is equal to this one to divide the given segment in golden ratio. Now, incidentally, for strictly algebraic purposes, we can simplify this, obviously because this is equal to minus a divided by 2 plus square root of 5a squared divided by 2. a goes out, so it's a divided by 2 square root of 5 minus 1. That's what it is. So this is a, 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 an, an algebraic, an algebraic algebraic solution, <laughs> whatever, algebraic solution to a uh, golden ratio uh, problem. Uh, but this is a pure algebra. What I did before was pure geometry. Well, well, that basically concludes my different problems which I wanted to address um, in some kind of um, synergy between algebra and geometry. So you can call it algebrometry. Uh, but it's only about um, uh, segments, because segments have only one characteristic, which is length. So that's why we are using algebra for segments. Number is always uh, corresponding to uh, some kind of a segment, and segment to a number. There is no extra shape um, kind of uh, qualities. Uh, there is, however, um, the 
a subject in mathematics which is called algebraic geometry. This is a much more complex uh, subject, and it actually is um, uh, explaining certain geometric qualities using uh, algebraic methods, or it's uh, describing certain geometric uh, properties of certain objects in multidimensional space using algebraic methodology. It's very interesting, but very, very complex uh, piece of uh, mathematics. It requires huge amount of imagination and creativity. Well, th this is just a preparation for something maybe more difficult, but it's still interesting that using geometry you can actually solve certain uh, algebraic problems or use algebra to, to solve certain geometric problems. Uh, that concludes the lecture for today. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. Don't forget that Unizor.com contains this and many other lectures. It's supposed to be studied in sequence uh, as a course of advanced level mathematics. Uh, and it's uh, open for everybody and parents are encouraged to take charge and control over this educational process. Thank you very much.